This is a lot more terrifying in person than it was in my head when I envisioned doing this. Oh man. Whew. All right, I'll be starting in Isaiah, I'll be reading from Isaiah 64 verses 1 through 8 or 9. It'll depend on how fast I go today. We'll kind of see how good we're feeling. Isaiah 64, just chapter 64, we'll start from the beginning and go to verse 9. All right, we're going to like split it up into sections. I'll read part of it and then explain what, like, what I got put on and what it meant to me, and then we'll slowly work our way through it all. All right. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down that the mountains would tremble before you as we fire set twigs as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes the water to boil come down to make your enemies know, to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you for when you did awesome things that we did not expect you came down and the mountains trembled before you since ancient times no one has heard no ear has perceived no eye has seen any god besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him so when I saw this, like, verse 1, I picture a giant veil, or like a giant curtain, a really thick curtain. Like, when you go to a play and you see the red curtain come down, I picture, like, a really thick curtain. I just imagine God just ripping right through that. That's just how powerful he can be. And, like, just the mountains quaked when he did this. It just shows just how powerful God is when he ripped them through. And in verse 2, it shows, like, when a fire sets, as sure as a fire sets ablaze and the water can boil, as sure as those things happen, God makes his name known to his enemies he makes sure that they know his name and that the nations will quake whenever you whenever he comes down and you hear his name and you know you're against him in verse three um it kind of explains like if you read before isaiah 64 and some of isaiah it goes on about all these great things that god has done and all these amazing things isaiah 64 verse three kind of amplifies that and says he has done all these great things all these amazing things that he has done And just nobody expected it. Nobody was looking for it. Nobody really thanked him for it either. It was just he did all these amazing things out of the kindness of his heart. In verse 4, when I read it, I looked at the, no God has, no other God has ever done anything that he has done. There are plenty of other, like, beliefs that everybody believes, but no God has ever done what he was able to do and what he has done for his people. All right, I'm going to read verse 5 through 7 now. You come to help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to do sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean. All of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. So when I read all this, what I got out of this is we are horrible people. Like, we don't deserve God compared to what he, what he has done for us. In verse 5, it just shows God is angry with the way we have sinned. Like, all the sins we have given out, he is angry with it. And it says, like, how can we be saved with everything we have done? If you look back on everything we have done, how can we be saved? Do we, how do we deserve to be saved with everything? And in verse 6, it shows that we're all unclean. Like, we're all a filthy rag, like... If you change oil in a car, and if you ever had a rag like filled with oil, it's disgusting. That's what I imagine when I see this. We're all this filthy rag that just need, that gets disposed of, and we don't deserve it. And a leaf, like we all start out as these beautiful things, a beautiful leaf, like right in the middle of fall, like in a season we're in now. Leaves are beautiful on the trees, but they all eventually they fall, they shrivel up, and they get swept away. That's what sin does to us. We all start out as this beautiful, yellow, bright, vibrant leaf. But as time goes on, and as we sin more and more, we become this brown, crumpled up, ugly thing that everybody wants to get rid of. And in verse 7, it, nobody calls out and thanks him for like everything he has done for us. Nobody reaches out. Not enough people go out and see what he has done and thank him for it. God has hidden himself because of all the sin we have created and everything we have done. He hides himself because of... That got loud. Because of 
the way that we have been and the way that we have sinned so much, he just has to hide himself because he can't bear to watch. And then verse 8 and 9. Yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. What I got out of this is God is forgiving. Like He forgives every single thing we have ever done, all our sins and everything. He forgives us for it. He looks at us like we are his children. He is our father. He's going to punish us, but it's not because he doesn't like us. It's out of love. He punishes us so we can become better than the way that we are. Like, I remember when I was young, when I was younger, my dad always punished me because I would always do something wrong. Like, I just always get punished. But looking back on it now, I realize that I might have not liked it at the time, but now I realize he's doing it because he loved me and because he wants me to be better than what I was doing at the time. And so that way I can learn from what I've done. And... In verse 9, it shows that, do you, Lord, do not remember our sins forever. It shows that it doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter what you've done, what you've done in your life, or how bad you have sinned. He will forgive you. It doesn't matter what you do. So, basically, God is this great and powerful person, and we don't deserve him at all. No matter what we've done, we have sinned so much that we really do not deserve how forgiving he is to us. But he still forgives us anyways, and he molds us to become better people through our punishment. Wow, I went through that really fast. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I talk too fast. All right, bow your heads and pray with me. Dear God, thank you for everything that's given. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to come out here and try to share the word with people. I Thank you for everything that have gone. We understand that you don't, we don't deserve you and everything that we have done, but, we lo- but you love us anyways, and you shape us to become better people. Amen. I went way too fast.